Kevin Pechma, Editor-in-Chief of City and State, and this is Last Look. Our guest today is former Congressman and mayoral candidate Anthony Weiner. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. So I wanted to start off by asking you, why is it that you want to be mayor of the city of New York? You know, I've had this abiding sense for some time now that the real core of the DNA of New York is this notion that there's a middle class capital. This is the place that we come from all different places. And we have this aspirational sense that if you come here, you can climb up the ladder. And it's based on my experience as a New Yorker, and it's based on my sense of what it means to be a New Yorker. And that middle class aspirational life, for the middle class and those people struggling to make it into the middle class, has never been under greater stress. Do you think that the, um, there has been a substantive conversation about the ideas that you've put forth? Or do you think it's really kind of focused on the, the more tabloidy aspect of your run? Look, I, it's, you know, I, I've never met a candidate who felt that the coverage of them was fair, and, and I'm not going to join that. I'm not going to be the first one. I, look, I, all I can do is go out every single day and talk about the ideas that I think are important. And I just have to hope that that message gets out, and it does seem like it is. So putting aside whether I think it's fair or not, there's no doubt about it that, you know, your reporters have been out there with me. The response has been remarkable. The polls show that, you know, to the extent that you can believe them, that the numbers of people who are prepared to give me a second chance and look at my ideas is, is, is remarkably high. You know, I've had instances that have made my hair hurt, you know, when we put out this idea book of 64 new ideas. All, you know, one, one newspaper wanted to focus on was that, boy, these ideas seem like ones he's had in the past, you know, that this new crime has emerged of plagiarizing from yourself, I guess. But I, I, I don't have any complaints, you know, when I, I know that I have a lot to prove to people, including people in the media, and I understand that. You uh, have a kind of unusual approach to dealing with the media. I know that sometimes when we write stories about you, you'll, you'll email us back or you'll call us. And, and I was wondering, you know, what, is, is there a strategy behind that level of engagement with the media, or do you really feel like you want to set the record straight? I, look, I, I don't know if it's a strategy. I'm a New Yorker. Um, you know, if I see something that, you know, there ought to be a law, I think about how we make a law to, to, to solve it. When I see something that should change, I'm going to express an opinion about it. If I see something that's been said about me that is particularly notable or something that I think should be corrected or something I want to get off my chest, I'm, I'm not, not shy about it. I'm, look, I am, for all its, for warts and all, I'm a, I like to think that I'm a classic New Yorker. You know, people come up to me in the street every day and they have colorful ways of saying the same thing which is I care about my city and here's what I want how I want it to change um, and sometimes like I said it can be colorful sometimes it's salty sometimes it's heartfelt sometimes it's passionate but but um, it's it's not so much of a, of a strategy it's just you know who I am I mean by and large you know I think that you and your reporters you try to get it right and you've got a lot of yeah, a lot of times you're trying to file stories very quickly. A lot of times you're trying to get in what has turned into a 20 or 30 second news cycle. Um, and, I, and I honor that. And also, I respect that the role and the job of journalists have to do in this whole game. I respect it. But it only works if they're getting some feedback as well. I don't think they operate in, in a vacuum. And so sometimes I try to in, insert myself um, to, uh, to kind of set the record straight. Uh, the Times wrote a very kind of brutal piece questioning your record in Congress, uh, saying that you only passed one bill and that was like a sweetheart deal for a wealthy donor. Um, what do you see as the crowning achievement of your uh, legislative career from a policy standpoint? Well, it's funny, you know, the, the, the Times also stipulated to a lot of the things I've argued, which is fighting for New York City is part of what you're supposed to do as a member of Congress. They said that the Bell Parkway is standing today because before any before another storm came, I led a, a multi-government coalition to make sure it got built up. That that the, the Newtown Creek, this terrible environmental disaster that has vexed law lawmakers for generations, I organized an effort that people thought was unlikely to get it made a Superfund site. Even this, the the the, the one law that they they point at led to hundreds of millions of dollars of revenues for, for New York City to stop black market and internet sale of tobacco. So I've got a lot, a long record. I think that, that fundamentally people need to understand there are different ways of advocating for New York City. If you purely look at the name, the lead name on a bill, it loses sight of the idea that very often you're part of coalitions to help things get passed. Um, and also, I, you know, you, if, you're, if you don't believe it's important to fight to get back for New York, uh, some of the tax dollars that we sent down to Washington, that also wasn't included in the calculation. People have different ways of looking at the job. I'm very proud of the work I did as a member of Congress. 
And I think that's why so many people kind of see me as a fighter for the middle class. Another aspect of that time story was uh, a reputation that you have of, of having been haughty in the past, if not abusive to your staff members. Is that an accurate portrayal of, of how you operate? You no, know, look, and I, I have many staffers who have been, who I'm still who are part of my kitchen cabinet that have been for years. I had people that served for me for many years. I think to some degree it's a little bit of a bum rap. I tell you what is a fair rap, I'm demanding. I, these are the taxpayers we're, we're working for. I'm getting demands to solve problems. My staff, you know, I would, oh, I would always kind of have this sense in them that, you know, we don't, there's an element of the story that I, I don't like to wait when it comes to constituent calls us up and they have a problem. I want to get right on it. Um, I've, I've got many, many, many of my, of my former staffers who, who, you know, have attested to me being a tough but fair boss, and that's what I am. But uh, there is a certain element to the personality that I clearly cop to, and that is I'm impatient. I'm impatient the same way I think a lot of New Yorkers are. If we see something going on, you know, you can come up with a thousand bureaucratic reasons why it can't be solved. My, my worldview, my sense of thinking is, you know what, I want to think about the way that you can solve it. Does that mean starting early in the day, going to bed late at night, working very hard to do it, but um, that is certainly who I am. Uh, lastly, I want to ask you, um, just because it's the story of the day about this, the shelf time story that has come out, um, do you have any reaction to it, uh, either to the substance of the story or to the way that it's played out with the times? Look, I've said many times whenever I was asked that I have deep regret for the, for the women's lives who were turned upside down by their unwitting involvement in all of this. They, um, one of the reasons I have been so reluctant to speak publicly about about them is that they are entitled to the to, to, to their privacy and uh, and I, I want to reiterate that that sense of apology. I've never talked about our the, the private exchanges that we've had and I never will uh, because I think they've already been put through enough. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thank you I appreciate it. Appreciate it's it's really great. I hope you have me back.